Guns on sailboats is a scary topic. As a cruiser, live aboard sailor, and someone who makes YouTube videos helping other people go and do live aboard things, the topic comes up from time to time. Should I bring a gun on the boat with me? What about pirates and crime? And invariably, the Peter Blake story comes up too. And we should talk about it. Stick around to the end because I have an important question for you. I'll ask you to leave a comment. I've done about 15,000 nautical miles as a live aboard in three different countries and I've never personally felt scared about crime. Except once in Miami, but that's Miami. Stories of piracy seem so far away in places like Somalia or I guess Honduras or maybe Haiti. but. In the hallowed ground of blue water cruising, the, let's call it, beaten path through the Caribbean, crime stories are usually just the dinghy going missing because the owner was too drunk to clean it off properly the night before. Or maybe a jerry can from the deck was left unfastened and isn't there when you come back from a hike on some remote island in paradise. But crime? Not really. I have always attested that... In the well-traveled parts of the Caribbean, by us sailors, locals would be so severely punished for messing with a tourist that it just doesn't happen very much. In the islands, where the only source of revenue is tourism, they take messing with a tourist pretty seriously. And if someone's bread and butter is selling fresh lobster tails to the sailors, they aren't really going to mess that up for a free outboard or a can of diesel. But nonetheless, the question comes up a lot. Should I have a gun on my boat? Just in case, I would feel a lot safer. And okay, yes, I agree with that point. Thinking about that makes me feel a little bit safer. But let's set aside all the customs and immigrations issues because there are a lot. Every country has different laws when it comes to guns and none of them look favor favorably on guns especially not letting foreigners come into the country toting their own guns. Let's assume that all the red tape having the vessel searched constantly and extra attention you're going to get from customs doesn't bother you. And it should bother you. When customs agents might be bribed with as little as a bottle of rum, I think it's best to get as little attention from them as possible. Show up with your papers, answer their questions, pay the fee, and get the hell out of there. That's always been my policy. But all that aside, having a gun on board has another very big risk. And there are tons of stories about this kind of stuff, but none more famous than the Peter Blake story. A hero, a world-renowned cup-winning sailor, a proper, proper man of the sea. And I'm going to tell you about this man, but understand, I would never downplay his contributions to the world in sailing and everything he did for us afterwards. This man is to be respected, his memory cherished forever. What happened to him was a tragedy, it was a crime, it was random, and it was not his fault. Sir Peter Blake, yes, the kind of sir only a queen can bestow, was born in New Zealand in 1948. He was passionate about sailing from an early age, starting to sail dinghies when he was just five years old. By 18 years old, he and his brother built their own keel boat and, of course, raced it, winning the 1967-68 New Zealand Offshore Group Championship. This guy was a boss from day one. In 1966, he went to Auckland Tech and earned a certificate of engineering, and in 71, he was off to the races. But I mean that literally. He was watch leader in the Cape Town to Rio on a boat called Ocean Spirit, and, of course, they won. The leaders of that race on that boat, they liked Peter so much they invited him up to the big leagues to race with their crew for the white bread around the world race. A big deal. Peter raced for a few years with other teams and learned the art of round the world sailing. Before, in the early 80s, he met an interesting cat. A man called Bruce Farr. And every racer's ears just perked up because Bruce Farr is a yacht racing design legend. He designed these.
for those of you who read really fast, you likely caught the FAR 40 in that list, a world-class racer, or maybe you saw the Beneteau first, some more race-winning boats. So Peter, he's going to attack this white bread round the world gig, says to Bruce Farr, make me a boat. And a boat he made. She was called Ceramco at 68 feet long. And Peter jumped aboard and set out in the race around the world. But in a freak accident, they lost the mast on the first leg. But they still managed a third place. I'm not entirely sure how. Not dissuaded, Peter was back in 1985 to race again, this time on a boat called Lion New Zealand as skipper, and this time they came in second. For 1989, it was his turn. He had a third, he had a second, and now he came to skipper Steinlager II, another of Bruce Farr's masterpieces at 83 feet and 77,000 pounds. And not only did he finish first, he was so dominant that he won every single leg of that race all the way around the planet. And was that enough for Peter Blake, winning the title? No. He then set out and, of course, won the Jules Verne Trophy. This is a big deal. The trophy from France, which to that day had only ever been won by Frenchmen. Peter and his co-skipper, Robin Knox Johnson, circled the planet under sail faster than anyone had ever done it. 74 days and 22 hours. In 1992, what's left to do after that? The America's Cup, of course. He didn't win in 92, but as Peter does, he was back in 95 to um, win. He beat Dennis Connor from the US, who's a legend, in a clean sweep while wearing his lucky red socks, which were a present from his wife, which is funny because these lucky red socks, that whole thing, would go on to be a thing. Over half a million pairs were sold in his honor in New Zealand to raise money for his racing campaign. He was a national hero. In 2000, Blake's America's Cup team became the first ever non-American team to successfully defend the cup. When Blake was done racing, he found a new passion, the environment. His boat, the Seamaster, the 118-foot or 36-meter two-masted schooner, has a beam of almost 33 feet. She's got twin 350-horse diesels, ice tunnel props, and displaces over 150,000 pounds. How's that for expeditionary? Seamaster traveled the world under Peter's feet doing environmental studies for the UN gathering data in his quest to preserve the environment. And before we get to the end, I just want to say thank you to all the people who make these videos possible. The goal here at Lady K Sailing is to get more people sailing more easily. And I couldn't do it without people like you. Patrons who give a, as little as a couple of bucks an episode to make this all possible. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you'd like to help out, please consider becoming a patron. On the 5th of December, 2001, Pirates boarded the Seamaster and shot and killed Blake while he was on an environmental exploration trip in South America, monitoring global warming and pollution for the United Nations. The two-month-long expedition was anchored off Macapa in Brazil at the mouth of the Amazon Delta, waiting to clear customs after a trip up the Amazon River. At around 9 p.m., a group of six to eight armed masked robbers wearing balaclavas and crash helmets boarded the Seamaster. As one of the robbers held a gun to the head of one of the crew members, Blake sprang from the cabin wielding a rifle. He fired and he shot one of the assailants in the hand before the rifle malfunctioned. He was then fatally shot in the back by an assailant. The boarders injured two other crew members with knives and the remaining seven people on board were unhurt. The only thing stolen by the attackers was a 15 horsepower outboard motor and some watches from the crew. Now, I tell you this story like so many others because for me, it means something. It was a world tragedy to lose Peter Blake and it's my belief that living on a sailboat in the beaten path that most of us want to explore on sailboats is relatively safe. I would wager it's safer than walking down the street in most cities where we live today. Knowing that my intentions are always on the beaten path where cruisers usually go anyway, crime isn't a big scary thing for me. And if someone should try to steal my outboard, again, for me, I think it's safer just to let them have it. 
Too many stories are told of crew having a gun and the situation escalating in a split second from robbery to homicide. Those are, of course, my thoughts. And I may regret this, but I would also like to hear yours. Can you leave a comment? And let's talk about it. Gun or no gun. I'll see you guys next week. Mm -hmm.